shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Dukes Models, and welcome to part two of the P38F build. So in the first installment, we basically got the cockpit base painted up and ready to go with its primer coat, a coat of silver for chipping, the interior green, the details picked out in black, and all that kind of stuff. And now it is time to move on to adding some further details in form of decals, in the form of you know, red and silver and things like that, and then moving on to weathering. So first things first, and that is dealing with the instrument panel. Now the instrument panel has a bunch of raised detail, like so, and Tamiya provides a decal for all the gauges, like this. I've had really good luck with Tamiya's instrument panel decals in the past, and I'm hoping that that holds up this time, but we shall see. I would also note that if you look at this little center console thing here that plugs into the instrument panel, out on the very edge you have two more little gauges. And for those, I'm actually going to just go ahead and steal the, come on, the instrument panel decals for the G cockpit and just take two of them off and shove them right there. Now, to me, it is frustratingly tight fisted in terms of providing other stencils for the cockpit to kind of liven it up. So I'll also be dipping into my stash of various cockpit stencil type decals just to liven things up as I go. But the main one that I'm focusing on first is the instrument panel. The only other decal that Tamiya really provides for the cockpit is this little tiny number 54 that goes on the top of the control yoke column. And so it should be a fairly simple affair. Let me go ahead and trim it out. So on that one, you really don't want to be dealing with any sort of carrier film off to the sides because it's a very skinny little thing. I don't really mind as much with like front and back stuff on it, but the sides are what count. Okay, so I might, since I've got this trimmed out and it's tiny, go ahead and deal with it first. Okay, so with decals of pretty much any brand, I've become a big fan of this Tamiya decal adhesive softener type. Basically, it's a two-in-one setting, softening, whatever, and adhesive solution because silvering pretty much seems to be an adhesion problem with decals. It's not about gloss or flat surfaces. It's not about rough or smooth surfaces. It's about the adhesive on the decal itself. And so adding a bit of adhesive to the surface you're putting the decal on can absolutely help a lot. And man, these Tamiya decals are still thick and lovely and awful to work with. I might need to go ahead and drop a bit of a fairly aggressive stuff on top of this just to see if I can get it to settle down at all. Man. I'm going to give that a second to dry. I can't think of anything else to do at the moment. It needs to adhere a little bit before I can really do much with it. All right, so that bodes super well for the instrument panel. <laughs> so when I'm approaching instrument panel decals, I like to cut them up into slightly more accessible chunks. I find it just makes life easier in general. So I'm going to go with this quadrant on the left first. Well, these things are just not sitting down at all. 
So I might have to choose a plan B. Okay, we'll let that sit for a minute and see if it improves. And then let's go back to this guy who has not sat down at all. Awesome. All right, we're gonna try some big guns on this. Testing out my ammo decal fix number two, which is like, seems even hotter than Solvacet. But for a decal that just won't behave like a decal, let's see if it'll do anything. Okay, so after a big, really stupid fight with the Tamiya decals, I went ahead and ripped them off. I literally stuck them to this sheet of paper a bit over this way. And instead, I'm going with these Annie's Universal Cockpit Dials, which let me get in there and place them individually. And as you can see, we've already got two done here, and they look pretty sharp. Now, these four are the first Tamiya decals I put down, and because I used some Tamiya Airbrush Cleaner, which is basically Tamiya Extra Thin, to get them to settle down somewhat, they're not going anywhere. But I need to place the rest of these, and it is pretty boring, so I'll probably just walk through one or two more, and then I will go ahead and finish the rest off camera. And the reason that I stuck the other decals on the paper is so that I have a little sizing reference so I can make sure that I, si that I cut the right sizes of decals for these, because these on this particular sheet go from one millimeter to 1.8. Another thing I like about these is unlike the, say the uh, air scale decals, which is another common option, these don't seem to be oversized. And so I know on my air scale decal sheets, I'm always basically denuding the bottom three rows and then the top ones I never use because they're way too big. You know, like the 148 scale sheet, like here is one example. These top ones are huge. There's no way they will fit on any of these little gauge detail areas. So they actually get used for 132nd more than they do for 148th. Anyway, I have got a little tiny one millimeter decal right here, kind of doing its soaking thing. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of that, to me, a decal adhesive softener type. Dab a little right in there. And I've actually found my favorite way to place these things. To get them in your fingers, like so. I apologize if it doesn't focus because I'm too close or whatever. Basically, just kind of move them towards the edge of the sheet. Of the sheet. Just grab them with the tweezers. That way I can kind of ensure some alignment. And drop them in place. And then from there, any extra finagling that you need to do, you can do. And that's pretty much it. Sweet. Now let's do one more larger one and then I will jump to the off camera. So outside of those tiny little ones in that larger one, most of these seem to be in the 1.4 millimeter range if you're following along at home and you happen to have the same decal sheet. So at least it makes it easy to pick. And yeah, they may not be accurate to the P38, but uh, I absolutely do not care. So we can slide it off, grab it with tweezers. Pop it down. Just kind of. Come on, move it into position. Okay, so that is how I'm doing the instrument panel decals. Let me get the rest done and we'll pop back in here. Okay, so I've been doing a bit of detail painting on things like side consoles and throttle quadrant and whatnot. And I've also gone ahead and installed HGW belts onto the seat. And, man, every time I do these in 148th, I'm just reminded of how much more fiddly they are in 48th than they are in 132nd. But they're down, and everything is looking good. And so now it is time to move on to some dry brushing. Typically, I'm not a huge fan of dry brushing, but in 148th scale, especially for an aircraft in service in somewhere like North Africa, 
it just makes sense. So for this, I'm using Tamiya Buff with some Retarder and some X20A. And I just find that it helps it kind of do its thing a little bit better. And I've tried that new ammo dry brushing paint and honestly I find it too thick and I find that it dries out way too fast. So I'm not a big fan of it. Alright, on to the throttle quadrant. This, I went ahead and applied some stencils to it to give it a little bit of life. Definitely beats the uh, complete absence of a throttle quadrant that's found on the Tamiya F14. I did a pretty decent job here, and this is honestly, well, I kind of grumble about it because it's a bit chonky. It's probably still the one of the better injection throttles I've seen. So, I'll take it. Okay, it's looking a little bit more worn up now. Awesome when we put the uh, UV glue over the gauges. Okay, now we're good. Have a good Okay, next up, it's time for some aqua gloss washes. So these are all clad aqua gloss, water, and then Liquitex Carbon Black Ink, Tamiya Rubber Black, Tamiya Deep Green for the interior green, and some Daler Rowney Sepia. So the idea with these is Aqua Gloss is a very good self-leveling gloss. Put a little bit of color in there, a little bit of water to keep it nice and thin. You get something very sort of diluted looking. And then you plop it around and it snuggles around a bunch of raised details extremely well. Stir. There's going to be a lot of ground to cover with some of these, so get ready. First up, I am going to get the black because the black is for. Let me move these out of the way so they're not getting jostled. The black is basically for instrument panels and black consoles. The whole idea is these will basically settle around where I've been doing the dry brushing and provide a nice little touch of contrast.
That one was intense. Okay, that is the black portion. I'm gonna move on to the green. So here already you can see how the black is picking up some of those details in the throttle quadrant console area. The seat is going to be interesting. So we've got to do the green and we've got to work around the belts. Okay, there's the seat. What's next? I think we've got the greens pretty well covered here. Let's go ahead and play with some sepia before we move on. So the sepia is intended for two main audiences here. The first audience is this little canvas thing on one of the gear bay bulkheads. So I am just going to get that wet and let it dry. Then the rest of the sepia is intended for the harness. Okay, so at this point we've been through decals, detail painting, dry brushing, aqua gloss washes, and now it is time to get into weathering with some oils. And for this, I'm going to be using some oil brushers, specifically dusty earth and dust. Noticing a theme here? Well, again, this is a Operation Torch North Africa. So I have to apologize for that mid-sentence cut. What happened was my camera filled up its SD card and then just stopped recording and didn't make any sort of sound or anything like that. So I thought it was recording the whole time that I was working with oils and it wasn't. So fortunately, I still have a few colors I want to play with and we can do a little bit more. So what I've done so far is use ammo oil brusher dust and dusty earth to start getting a sense of essentially dust and environmental crap in the cockpit itself from the pilots climbing in, the crew working around there, all that sort of thing. And I think it's looking pretty solid at this point. I definitely don't want it to be massively dirty because these were, you know, fairly newish aircraft at the time of Operation Torch. They were ridden hard, of course, but, you know, we're not talking like south pacific 1944 here so trying to find a good healthy balance and i think i just about have it for most of this especially when it's all put together uh, basically you've got some on the floorboards which makes sense some on this wheel hump again we're talking areas where feet are contacting these pretty frequently where cockpits are open it's windy you know etc got some again on the rudder pedals 
some on the like the lower portions of the sidewalls. And I've even got a little tiny bit working back here into the radio compartment. I figure it's going to be blocked from the center area from getting too much stuff going on back there. But a little bit just to liven it up. And of course the radio gear and all that shit's going to go in here too. So there's more to come for this aft section of the cockpit. The seat also has some. It might be hard to see. But basically along the sides, kind of along the front lip. Essentially places where the pilot's body isn't in frequent contact. And stuff can just kind of build up on the sides a bit unhindered. But I'm not quite done. And what I want to do next is essentially take what I've started here and add a little bit of contrast to it, both lighter and darker tones. And I'm going to do that with some streaking brusher, which is just oil brusher, uh, medium brown, and some oil brusher buff. And those are these two colors right here up top. You can see one is darker and one is lighter than the dust colors. So I definitely want to have a light touch with these, so I'm going to find a nice light touch kind of brush as my seat crackles and pops around me. And these Zuki Mira brushes just constantly too useful to put away, aren't they? Okay. So the way I want this to go down is to do a little tiny, tiny bit of medium brown first. I really don't want this to be heavy or anything, I just want it to be kind of just right. And that's really tough to gauge. Because I don't want to blow away the dusty look, but I also want a little bit more contrast. the wheel hump. And that's pretty much all I'm going to do with the medium brown. I don't want a whole lot. I don't want it messing things up. Um, or overpowering anything. Just a little bit of extra stuff, basically. And I think I'm going to put some on the yoke boot here just to dirty it up a little tiny bit. I don't want much, but putting buff on this wouldn't make sense because it's already pretty light. Now the thing with the buff is it's substantially lighter, so I can use it hopefully create some like pick out areas. By working it dry, I'm also assuring that it doesn't get uh, get all smeared around and it kind of stays where it is. So as you can see, what's happening here is building up along this console ridge, which you would expect of dust. You know, it, it builds up in corners and crannies and whatnot. And so adding a bit of contrast there. So bring it out of the shadow that it will be in inside the cockpit. All part of that whole stage makeup thing. Kind of slightly overdo this so it has a hope in hell of showing up at all. Otherwise, all these efforts are pointless. Yeah, that's looking pretty good from here. 
Let's bring the sidewalls into it just a tiny little bit. So just get a sense of what that looks like with the sides together. You've definitely got presence of dust in the cockpit. It's a bit harder on this side because we've got the console there. We've got this throttle quadrant kind of hanging out, causing problems too. Yikes. <laughs> Not a lot of room to work in here, is there? Just let me go in here and clean that up and diffuse it a little bit. If I can get this guy off. Okay, now to focus on the seat. Again, I'm trying to avoid places where the pilot is actually sitting. I figured between pilot in the parachute pack it's kind of like a car seat right like everything around the car seat the radio is dusty the area behind the steering wheel is dusty but the seat itself is pretty clean except that the edges where you drop stuff where if you are kind of out in the shit That's where dust can pile up. That's where mud can pile up. So that's basically what I'm trying to replicate here. Okay. So I think we're in a pretty good place in terms of the weathering. Give this a few minutes to set up, flat coat everything, and then we're almost done with the cockpit. Yay. Well, shit. All right, let's keep moving. I'll find it. I will restore it. It made a sound somewhere over there, so it can't be that far. Cool, that looks pretty good. I really like the way that the aqua gloss wash is picking out those details like on that side console there. That looks awesome. All right. So next, I need to find that one little piece that's somewhere over to the right of my bench. Okay, so the runaway part has been found and balance has been restored to the workbench. Now that everything has been flat coated, it is time to go ahead and hit the instrument panel gauge faces with some UV curing resin glue. This stuff levels out nicely and dries to a nice gloss, so it makes it a fantastic choice for glossing up instrument panel gauge faces like these. 
And if you've watched some of my past videos, like the P40F, you've probably seen me do it there. It's a pretty simple process. You basically get a toothpick, you dip it in this resin. Thankfully, these LED lights don't uh, trigger this stuff. Or if they do, they take a while to trigger it. So there's some working time that we can play with. It's helpful when you're doing this to position yourself so you can see the reflection of the light really well. Makes it easy to know when you've placed enough. You can kind of see the glue flowing and filling out the circle that it's in. Okay. I'll move the pad out of the way so we don't cure it to a lump. Let's get the UV flashlight out. And let this do its thing. Okay, there we have it, an instrument panel with gauges. And that reflectivity is really cool, but honestly when it's in the aircraft you're probably not going to see too much of it. <clears throat> it always seems cooler outside of the cockpit than inside. Probably because of the viewing angles and where you get the reflection from, and you're not going to be getting a lot of reflection bouncing back at you from the bottom of the cockpit, so... The physics of light propagation are stupid. All right, we're getting perilously close to final things here. Uh, one of them is going to be installing the yoke onto the control column here. We're using some ultra glue for that. Next, we've got to glue the little forward console to the instrument panel itself. Alright, next up we got the steering yoke. Okay, so things are glued. I'm going to give them a few minutes to dry and then we will kind of do a little assembly of the cockpit and wrap up episode two. Okay, let's do a little bit of final assembly here. And just like that, we have a cockpit. Now, the seat can be installed, but it also is called out to be installed later, I think, because of all the radio shit that goes on back here. But it's also possible to place it. So it can come in and out as needed, which will be useful for masking off the cockpit later on and all that kind of thing. Now, and I mean, I love that the fit of this is so good that I don't really even have to glue it. I can just kind of leave it like this sure that everything fits and lines up the way it should which it absolutely does because it's a Tamiya kit yay Just hit a few of these join areas make sure that we're locking it down okay now for the last step of this installment installing this into the upper wing fuselage Thing. So it just goes in like that. Love how cleanly all this goes together. It's a massive, massive shift from what I got to experience with that trumpeter kit. This one feels competent. <laughs> and if you look up here, got these little tabs that lock in right there so I mean everything is well thought out from an engineering perspective designed to fit J 
just like so. Then we can even take bottom portion it literally just goes in like that with a snap and I'll probably have to tape it for photos and whatnot but before too long we'll be able to just glue this in in its entirety so there you have it a P38F cockpit all glued in Okay, so in this episode, the focus was on detailing and weathering the P-38's cockpit. And as we approach the end of the line, here is how it has come out. Overall, I've got to say I'm quite pleased with this, especially considering that it is almost all kit parts and kit details. The only significant aftermarket outside of you know, decals for the instrument panel and some stencils and placards is the resin seat from the Edward set and some HEW belts. The rest of this is all Tamiya. And I have to give them kudos for putting together a very impressive cockpit. Definitely one of the best I've seen in 148 scale. I think there are a few in 132nd that would surpass it, but, I mean, it's 132nd scale, right? This is definitely a better cockpit than the 132nd scale Trumpeter P-38, however. Uh, it does not require a pilot with freakishly long giraffe legs or any of that kind of stuff. It looks normal in terms of proportions and everything that you would expect. So, yeah, very, very cool. In terms of weathering, I took a slightly more subdued approach than I typically would. Uh, this is basically considering that it's serving in North Africa, which is a pretty arid environment. You don't have a lot of rain, so therefore you don't have a lot of mud. You have dust blowing around and dust kind of tracking in with pilot boots and crew boots and things like that. But dust doesn't build up, you know, these massive mud piles on the floorboards or anything like that. Instead, it kind of settles into nooks and crannies, which is what I've gone for here with, you know, kind of some of the build up along the edges of, like, the seat, the edges along the sidewalls, and various other crannies in the cockpit itself. One thing I've been really happy with this time out was the aqua gloss washes. I think they did a great job of bringing out certain details. Like, if you look down here at this little side console, those switches stand out. And all that is is that aqua gloss wash just providing some extra little shadow around the edges. You know, same thing with the sidewall details on both sides, and honestly, even with the instrument panel itself, the gauges stand out really, really well. So, yeah, overall, quite satisfied. So coming up in part three, it's going to be time to turn this over and start paying attention to the gear bay, uh, particularly the nose gear bay first, but then I think the instructions also have us move on to the main gear bays in the booms. And from there, it's breaking out into general construction. So hopefully this thing will move pretty quickly towards paint, which is where I really want to spend the bulk of my time on the project. In the meantime, if you want to get early access to these videos before they hit YouTube, you know, and get behind the scenes looks at what else is on the bench and what I'm considering for the future and things I'm stressing about and things I'm just thinking about in general, uh, I would love it if you would consider signing up to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash dubesmodels. If you don't want to, no worries whatsoever, but if you do, awesome. Thank you for the support. It definitely helps keep this channel running at full tilt. And... Yeah, that is pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I hope this was useful as uh, as you consider or are building a Tamiya P38. Stick around for much more to come, and I will catch you all later.